the budget for 2023-24 and the budget speech of the Honorable Finance Minister show how far this government is removed from the people and their concerns about life, livelihood, and the growing inequality between the rich and the poor. Let me begin by pointing out with regret that the FM has not mentioned the words unemployment, poverty, inequality, or equity anywhere in her speech. Mercifully, she has mentioned the word poor twice in her speech. I'm sure the people of India will take note of who are in the concerns of the government and who are not. Let me turn to the numbers. Last year, the government estimated the GDP for 2021-22 at rupees 232,14,703 crore, and assuming a nominal growth rate of 11.1%, projected the GDP for 22-23 at rupees 258 lakh crore. The GDP for 21-22 has since been revised upward to rupees 236 lakh 64,637 crore. In today's budget papers, the GDP for 22-23 has been estimated at rupees 273, 7 lakhs 751 crore, which yields a growth rate of 15.4% much above the earlier estimate. Given these impressive numbers, real GDP ought to have grown in double digits. Yet the FM and the Economic Survey put the GDP growth at only 7% this year. Will the government explain? The claim of real GDP growth is on the face of lower capital expenditure. Please see the following numbers. In the current year, the BE and RE numbers, capital expenditure was budgeted at 7,50,246 crore. Revised estimate is lower at 7,28,274 crore. Grants for creation of capital assets was estimated at 3,17,643 crore. Revised is 3,25,588 crore. The effective capital expenditure was estimated at 10,67,889 crore, but revised downwards to 10,53,862 crore. Please note that both capital expenditure of the central government and the effective capital expenditure are lower than the budget estimates. So what drove growth in 22-23? We know that private investment is down, exports are down, and private consumption is stagnant. So how does the government explain the 7% growth in the current year? Besides, in 22-23, the growth rates in Q1 and Q2 have been estimated at 13.5% and 6.3% respectively. So we already have 9.9% .9 growth in the first half of the year. If the whole year will only yield 7%, does that mean that Q3 and Q4 will record growth rates of only 4 to 4.5%? For the whole year, therefore, quarterly GDP growth rate is sliding. 13.5, down to 6.3, down to 4.2, and then eventually down to 4.0. There are other numbers which are disconcerting. The lesson to be drawn is that the government is not spending what was promised on key schemes. Now, I've given the numbers in the BE and the RE. Just look at the numbers. Agriculture and allied activities 83,521 crore, down to 76,279 crore. PM Kisan, 68,000 crore to 60,000 crore. Education, 104 
1278 crore to 99881 crore health 86606 crore to 76351 crore social welfare 51780 crore to 46502 crore urban development 76549 crore to 74546 crore this is shocking umbrella scheme for development of scheduled caste 8710 crore to 7722 crore scheduled tribes 4111 crore to 3874 crore minorities 1810 crore to only 530 crore and other vulnerable groups 1931 crore to 1921 crore now look at transfer to state what was promised was 3 lakh 34,339 crore but what will be tr tr transferred is only 2,70,936 crore where have the remaining 64,000 crore gone no taxes have been reduced except for the small number who have opted for the new tax regime no indirect taxes have been reduced there is no cut in the cruel and irrational GST rates there is no reduction in the prices of petrol diesel cement fertilizers etc there is no cut in the numerous surcharges and cesses which are anyway not shared with the state governments who has benefited by this budget certainly not the poor not the youth looking desperately for jobs not those who have been laid off not the bulk of the taxpayers not the homemaker not the thinking indians who are shocked by the growing inequality the rise of the number of billionaires and the wealth being accumulated in the hands of the one percent of the population and certainly not you you have not benefited by this budget this much is clear the government is determined to push the fortunes of gift city ahmedabad at the cost of other commercial and financial centers the government is also determined to push the new tax regime for which there are few takers for a variety of reasons besides making the new tax regime the default option is grossly unfair and will rob the ordinary taxpayer of the meager social security that he may get under the old tax regime the economic survey listed all the headwinds that the world and india will face but did not offer any solutions to face these headwinds the budget speech did not even acknowledge the headwinds the government is living in its own imaginary world three stark facts are acknowledged the world over one world growth and world trade will slow down significantly in 2023 for india it will be 2023 24. two many advanced economies will go into a recession three the global security situation thanks to the ukraine war and other brewing conflicts will deteriorate if all three materialized what will the government do what kind of burdens will that place on the people who are suffering owing to inflation and unemployment. There were no answers provided either in the economic survey or in the budget speech. This is a callous budget that has betrayed the hopes of the vast majority of the people.